Hello, my beauties. So I got a bunch of ridiculous questions, and yes, they are ridiculous, and I'm going to tell you why in this video about the Morocco retreat. Um, how much should I pack, and where are we going, and blah, 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 blah. First of all, this is not black people vacation where you're going to a Caribbean island to live like a black person in America eating McDonald's on a Caribbean island and margaritas. Okay, so that's first off. If you're coming to Morocco with me, you're coming to Morocco to learn how North African people live. You're coming to Morocco to see that the food is made by hand. You're coming to Morocco to learn that people live off of $70 a month and they make you a splendid meal and sit down and talk to you for six hours over a meal that they then cook just because you were coming for six hours. You're coming to North Africa to understand why North Africa is not America, not to go shopping in malls, <laughs> like you're in America with 16 suitcases, okay? If you've looked at the itinerary carefully, you will see that we're doing everything from hiking to swimming to walking into villages to going to markets where they make leather to going to markets where they make pottery to going to markets where people just make tea or spice markets and there's going to be a lot of walking in tiny little towns that have been around since the 12th century. Okay, so when people write me things like, oh, well, uh, am I going to have to be a vegetarian? Let me talk to the vegetarians for just one minute. Unless you are in India, being a vegetarian is a first world problem. It is a privilege. When people live off of $70 a month, the idea that you can turn your nose up at a piece of chicken is a privileged, privileged way of operating. Now, if you've never traveled to Africa, you probably don't know this, right? I can tell you in Liberia or in Zimbabwe, if you go to Africa and somebody makes you chicken in their house, that is their chicken for the month. Shut the fuck up and eat their chicken. They have given you their food for the month in one meal. Now, because this is a tour, but it is a tour that April and Rashid are putting together where you're going to learn how Moroccan people live how tribal people live who make rugs that we buy for $7,000 by hand, we're gonna accommodate some things. But if you're coming to Morocco to be a vegetarian, stay your ass home. You're traveling to a country that is known for meat. <laughs> Their entire menu is meat. It is lamb, it is chicken, it is beef. It is a lot of chicken and a lot of lamb. In the desert, it's camel burgers. All right. Now, all the appetizers are vegetarian. That's what you'll be living on. They serve you things that are comparable to hummus, but they're like peppered sauces and bread, peppered beans and bread, eggplant stewed salad. So traditional Moroccan salad is cooked vegetables. If this is your first time, sure, you could eat vegetables. Guess what? You don't want to be eating raw vegetables if it's your first time traveling in Africa because your ass will be sick. Okay. So you will be eating cooked vegetables that won't have any seasonings because the buildings you will be sitting in have been there since the 12th century. The families that are sitting in those buildings cooking for you in their homes have been there since the 12th century. They cook a certain way that they are famous for with beef. Okay. Most of the places that people live are built like castles or citadels because Morocco was someplace that people tried to conquer all the fucking time. So, Whenever you're in a building, it's going to be totally enclosed. The garden's going to be inside, right? So when you have a culture where people were constantly trying to colonize them and they were resisting, you have people living in the equivalent of a castle, which meant that they grew everything inside, brought it in, brought in the water, brought in the vegetables, and what was inside that castle is what people ate. So their entire menu of famous foods are smoked and cured meat and smoked vegetables with meats in them and stews and homemade bread, Moroccan pancakes and like amazing food. If you want to be a vegetarian, you got to decide, am I going to be an American and be a vegetarian, non-vegan, not eating dairy, not eating it in a country where people are just glad to have a piece of fucking chicken. The reason I left America is because of this kind of privilege, because that's what it is. Brown people and brown mamas are trying to put food in their baby's mouth across the world. Only in America do we have time to be a vegetarian. Guess what? 
everybody here ain't dying of high blood pressure and strokes and obesity because they're eating healthy food. There aren't a bunch of hormones and drugs in the chicken like in America. Nobody's going to farms and burning half of the crops in America so they can make money. Here, if you arrive at two o'clock in the morning, then that Moroccan mama is getting up out her bed and she is chopping the chicken up. She is cutting the vegetables and she's picking some herbs out her garden and she's making you a meal fresh. There are no hormones, there are no drugs, there is none of that bullshit in it. It is fresh and they 10 times healthier than you are and most Americans and nobody's 400 pounds. Nobody turns 50 and is struggling to stay thin. They're healthy. So you can come to Morocco as a vegetarian. You will be eating bread and beans. You will be eating pizza. You might eat some couscous. It will not have salt in it. It will not have hot hotness in it. You will try and order food that is vegetarian. It will come and then you will not be like the white people on the last tour I was on who complained about everything that was put in front of them. If you wanna be a vegetarian, stay your ass in the US with Donald Trump. These people have learned how to cook amazing food for the last 6,000 years because they had to protect themselves in fucking castles. So their entire menu is built around sustainable, healthy food, right? That will fill their children if they're under siege. And the food is incredible. Smoked chicken with cured lemon that's been sitting in balsamic vinaigrettes that are sweetened with figs for six days. I just had the lemon chicken. It's made from the cured lemon. It's extraordinary and olives. The food is magnificent. If you want to be a vegetarian, you will miss the food. You will eat bland couscous because they don't know how to adapt what they make to your Western taste buds. You're asking people to change the way they've been cooking for 6,000 years that has been keeping people alive and really healthy and balanced for 6,000 years. They ain't got hypertension here. They ain't got diabetes here. Not like black people got in America. Hmm, vegetarian black people too. How about that? How did that happen? And they don't have no fucking tofu here. Okay, so I'm going to dispense with all that vegetarian bullshit right now. You're going to be eating bread. So if you want to be a vegetarian or you want to learn about the magnificence of North Africa, you got to make some choices. You're going to be hungry as a motherfucker. So I suggest you buy, you buy some chips or stay your ass home. This is all I can do. Now, the next question, I'm getting lots of crazy questions that is telling me that you have not had your ass to the dreamunlock.com slash by dash dreaming more. I'm gonna put the link up here in the post. It means you did not sit there and look at that itinerary. Because if you're asking me questions of where are we flying into and where are we flying out of, that tells me you ain't look at day one and day 17. Because day one says flying to Casablanca and day two says you've been in Marrakesh Marrak for five days and now you're leaving from here. Read before you ask me dumb questions. Now you wanna spend 17 days with me in Morocco? This is what it looks like. For those of you who have coached with me, you know I bring the goods. I have zero bullshit for your issues. And I have zero bullshit because I travel in a tour and I have traveled all over the world and people are horrified by Americans. We are privileged, spoiled motherfucking brats. And we're rude and disrespectful of cultures that are much better at being human beings than we are. And I'm sorry, Moroccans are. When people who did not know me from Adam's house cat get up out their beds at one and two o'clock in the morning to make me a fresh meal, I better sit the fuck down and to ask about their children and remember their names and drink tea when they stop me in the market for two hours to bake me cookies and tea. It's a different world that you're entering. It's why you ain't never gonna see me at Essence Music Festival. You ain't never gonna see me in St. Thomas or Jamaica or you know any of the islands because I'm not interested in going someplace and being an American. It's not interesting to me. The motherland is interesting to me. Sitting in buildings that are 12,000 years old with people who are carving pearl embedded tiles with their hands and making a piece of furniture and then have a time to have dinner with me that they've made with their hands, that's what I actually have time for, okay? So the vegetarians that were on my trip before, they ate bread, they ate couscous, they ate yogurt. Breakfast is very French. It's yogurt, it's cheese, it's bread. It's tea until your eyes are purple in the face. It is cheese sandwiches, it is baguettes. It is French breakfast, essentially, right? We will stop for lunch. 
There will be fast food and sandwiches. You can always get that bullshit anywhere. I did eat street food. I did eat vegetables. I did get sick. I took a Cipro and kept it moving and then ate some more Moroccan food on the street because it would be like traveling to India and not eating the food. The food is, is amazing. So I had to have it. Like I had pineapple from Costa Rica, <laughs> like on the street in Morocco and then like smoke figs together. I was like, fuck this. I, I want to understand this culture because it's so beautiful. Um, and the, the contrast between sweet and savory is magnificent. And that's what they do with their students and meats. Now, my one bit of advice would be to say, can I have the chicken tagine without chicken? You might get a better chance of getting something that actually tastes like real food instead of just couscous that was pulled from the field and boiled in water. Because that's actually all they know how to do for you when you start talking about vegetarian. Or some vegetables, you know, cooked in some olive oil and roasted a little bit and you throw some salt on it, right? It's not a part of the culture. And it wouldn't occur to them not to eat meat because they don't eat all day long, right? They eat two meals. <laughs> so they're gonna eat to eat for real. Right? They don't nosh like we do in the United States. There aren't 50,000 options. There is food is prepared. Nobody rushes to eat food, right? It, it's, it's like the French in many ways that a meal is seven courses that we're all gonna sit and linger over it, all right? Here's my other thing. You're not gonna travel like an American with me. So that means Rashid's gonna lay out the rules for you. You're gonna travel like an African or at the very least an extremely respectful American. Now, the first thing I know that nobody has done, and Americans are fucking famous for this. Have you picked up a travel book? Have you Googled Morocco? Have you Googled every single city on the itinerary? Have you read the descriptions of the cities? Do you know what they're famous for? We're going to Agadir. They're famous for surfing. We're going to 17 different places. We're going to the mountains. You're going to ride a fucking camel up the side of a mountain. And then you're going to stay in somebody's house by a fireplace where they make you homemade stew and build a fire for you. And you're going to eat breakfast on their rooftop and watch the sun rise in the Atlas Mountains. So you want to ask me about luggage? You, you, you going to put your three suitcases on the fucking donkey and ride up the side of the mountain for an hour? Have you read the itinerary? Now, you can bring your four suitcases. They're going to stay in the van or you're gonna carry them. Rashid will make arrangements for places where we're walking a long way to have suitcases. Why would you go to a place that's famous for fabric and leather and clothing and caftans with four suitcases? Cause in every single fucking stop, you are gonna buy something. If you're gonna be riding a donkey, you're gonna need the same pair of jeans. <laughs> I actually, I don't know. I have family that lives in the Caribbean. What that means is you carry one big suitcase full of clothes to give away so you can fill it back up with things that you could only get on that island. That is exactly how I came to Morocco. I filled up my suitcase with clothes that I kind of want and I didn't want, I wore sometimes, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And every hotel we stopped in, I left a piece of clothing and a tip for the mates who were lovely to me. And I bothered to learn their fucking names because I'm in their house, which is their country. This is why my experience in Morocco is so amazing because I, I left my privilege at the door. And I said, let me come here and learn how to be an African woman in an African country. And what I got in return was Africans loving me. Africans giving me their last, driving me around 14 hours looking for one piece of fabric. <laughs> because I loved them, they loved me, and they went out of their way for me. But what's also important to know is that this culture, that is what they do. They are kindness revisited. They are kind. If you say you're a vegetarian, they gonna go back there and try and figure that shit out six or seven times. A woman who can't read, a woman who can't read and only speaks a tribal language is about 4,000 years old, is gonna try and figure out a way to make you some tofu. And she's gonna, she's gonna do it six or seven times. And you're gonna stop fucking say thank you because she went above and beyond, right? Above and beyond. This woman lives in a house without a toilet and you, you wanna worry about not having me? Child, please. <laughs> Travel the world. 
get some perspective about how much you have so you can start doing a whole lot fucking more with it. Because in this country, people have 300% less than you do and have the most beautiful artwork and handcrafts that I've seen in the entire world. The entire world. You will see in this country somebody wearing a burqa covered head to toe and dressing the way somebody's been dressing for the last 5,000 years. And then you walk around the corner and you'll see a hoochie girl with a lot of straight hair blow dried and eyebrows done and high heels with a hijab thrown on the back of her weave. <laughs> it's a magnificent country. It's a magnificent country. It truly, truly is. But I'm going to be real with you. Rashid is the nice person involved in this tour. So when you have questions, Rashid would be the one to answer. I am the person that's going to tell you you're being a privileged American. Shut the fuck up and leave what they put down. I'll go around the corner and get the street food, which is excellent. It's extraordinary. The warm bread and the warm beans and creamy sauces and shit and olives are off the fucking chain. And no, it is not like hummus. It's a whole different thing going on here. Okay? The bread is extraordinary. So, again... You're going to get some bland vegetables. If you want to pack some hot sauce, you can do that. You can get some bland vegetables that were picked out of somebody's garden. They're really fresh. And they're roasted in some olive oil and some couscous on the side. It's not going to be spicy like the rest of the food because that's not what they're used to. They're trying to do two things. They're trying to figure out what Westerners like. That's one. In a world which they don't have any of that shit. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is they're trying to undo how they understand how to cook. Right? tagines that are really great, like an urica, is somebody with a flame, just a flame, right? a little fire. And then they put the pot and slow cook the stew for six hours over a flame, not a fire, a couple of flames to make sure the figs and the raisins and all the sweetness and then the tartness of the lemons all sort of merge into something magnificent with a flame. So you're asking them to undo all the amazing cooking they already do and do something they know nothing to fuck about and they have no supplies for. Okay, let's work with that. Okay, great. So that's what you're going to get, people trying to do that for you. But they don't have all the shit to make that work. So they don't, they don't stir fry shit. <laughs> they stew. They bake. They flame. They roast. So you're going to have to make do. It's not going to taste and smell like the food around you. It's just not. It's going to be bland. It will be filling, but it's going to be bland. And you're going to have a hard time getting enough protein. But that should be familiar because most bullshit vegetarians in the United States are not getting enough protein anyway. I know this for a fact. Why? Because if you're a vegetarian, you need about 34 grams of protein in every single meal. You ain't getting that in a bean. You ain't even getting that in a smoothie. You would need to eat, let's say, three cups of cottage cheese with every single meal two seven to nine ounce to pieces of tilapia with every single meal. So you're already malnourished. And protein powder, don't get it. I know, I was vegan for my fibroids. I know how much it takes to actually eat the amount of protein that you need to really function. And when you have 17 fibroids and you're bleeding out on the regular and you go see a nutritionist and you're like, I need to be vegan because Queen of Fua says I need to be vegetarian to heal myself. And they're like, um, you're bleeding, so you can't be a vegetarian like most vegetarians and not get enough nutrients and protein. I don't know one vegetarian getting enough protein. Not one. Now, how are you going to do that in Morocco? I don't know. But you're probably already not doing that in the United States, right? But you eat a piece of fish, two pieces of fish with every single meal, including breakfast. You're eating three cups of cottage cheese because you need three cups just to give you enough that's like the equivalent of a seven to nine inch piece of tuna. Or just skip it all together. You're going to be tired and then it's going to be time to go up into the castle and meet the people who've been making rugs with their daughters for the last you know, 6,000 years where they shot. And we're going to eat Ben Hadou, where they shot... Um, the, un, the Unsullied, the army, the African army in Game of Thrones, we're going to go to that town. And you're going to meet people who've been making rugs for thousands of years. And you're going to sit in the motherfucking castle. You're going to be tired, vegetarians. I'm just going to tell you. And Rashid loves to show you his country. 
every adventure, every hill, every waterfall, every fountain, you're going to see it. Every garden, every palm tree, every oasis, every hill in the desert, you're going to see it. And you're going to be hungry and tired because you're not getting enough protein. There are no protein substitutes here. Like you have in the United States. You're going to chop on a piece of tofu, that ain't here. And even that, if you look at tofu and you look at the protein values, you're actually not getting enough protein. And a 17 day tour where you will be walking and seeing everything from the mountains to the sea, to snow, to surfing, you're gonna be hungry and tired. So be a vegetarian. But one thing that won't happen is that I won't be in the kindest people who I've ever met their homes with a bunch of privileged, naughty Americans complaining about the food. That's actually not going to work for me because I respect and love these people entirely too much. So if you need to be an American with your isms, Morocco will not be the place for you. And there are lots of rules that Americans have that they take for granted that are extremely disrespectful here. I think the privilege of variant vegetarianism is one of them especially when somebody's giving you their last because you're an honored guest. Now, the other thing that won't be allowed is take a picture of people without asking. You know, if you live in Harlem, how you hate how the European tourists do that? Yeah, well, that famous picture of the green-eyed little girl that everybody thinks is Moroccan, she's really dark, and she has a caftan over her head that's famous for Time Magazine. First of all, she's not Moroccan. Second of all, the photographer, she's Afghani. The photographer made millions of dollars, won a Pulitzer Prize, and is rich as a fuck and is a European. They found that Afghani girl. She didn't have a hard motherfucking life. She's wife number four, struggling in Afghanistan and never saw a penny of that money. Guess who knows about that? Moroccans. So you don't take people's fucking picture here without asking. If you look at my page, the only Moroccans that you will see are Moroccans that I know personally. I did not walk around South and pictures of people. Height of disrespect. Hi, because again, it's another way to colonize people. They know that you're going to go post that somewhere and get attention. They know that you're going to post that somewhere, and make money off of it. That's their assumption. And as an American, they'd probably be right. That's one thing. Staring at people because they're totally veiled, that don't work. This is a country of tolerance. So what I recently learned is that the people who are totally veiled and who are really religious are like our Amish. The only difference is in American culture, we people who have strong religious beliefs like that, we make them live off in the country away from us because we're not accepted. In Morocco, if you are very conservative and that's your thing, you're going to do the whole burqa, right? Everybody's going to respect you. You get to go to the grocery store and nobody stares and it's all good, right? So Americans can't stare and want to take pictures of people, right? So. Again, the best way not to come to another country and be an American asshole, and I can tell you, everybody in the world hates fucking Americans. Hates them. I generally speak in Spanish first because I don't want to be treated like an American. And when I'm out in Morocco, in Spain, and I see other Americans, I'm embarrassed. So fucking disrespectful. And the first way to avoid that I'll tell you what a man said to me in a little tiny village. Do you know nothing of Morocco? Why would you come someplace that you know nothing about? Because April said it was nice. Pick up a fucking Lonely Planet Morocco. I fucking love this book. Because it's real life people who travel to these places and they say, this is the way locals do it. This is the way budget travelers do it. This is the way students do it. This is the way middle class people do it. And this is the way rich people do it. You have five ways to do this country. And I'm gonna show you different kinds of ways in each place to do this country. You also learn about the history and why things exist as they exist. You learn why people dress the way they do. You learn a lot of things. So to ask questions about a place that you plan on plunking down uh, $1,900 for, and you ain't read, you don't know about the place, that don't make no good goddamn sense. Makes no good goddamn sense. I learned about Morocco when I was six years old. My father took out this coffee table book called The Adornments of Africa. I will never forget it, it sits on my table right now. Taisha Adams gave it to me after I told her this story. I was six years old. My father opened The Adornments of Africa. It's a beautiful book. If I was in my apartment now, I'd show it to you. And it opens with the women with the henna and the silver jewelry of North Africa, the Tuareg and the Berber. The Berber are 
the people who live up in the mountains will meet here. The Tuareg are from Mali. Their art, their jewelry is extraordinary. And I was like, dad, I want to know more about this place. So he started getting books and talking to me about tile making and talking to me about fabric and talking about the Moors being thrown out of Spain and how the Moors did surgery. I learned about the place, which is how I fell in love with it, which is why when I got here, I knew how to act. It's really simple, right? And it was like mystical finally seeing in person the things I had been reading about. There are lots of cultural things that you should know. You don't use your left hand. But you shouldn't be learning this the first night you're there when Rashid is giving you an orientation. You should read about the place that you're visiting. And, and it needs to be a place that you want to visit for you. Right? Not for me. For you. So read about it. You ain't got no money to buy Lonely Planet? Okay, you ask on the internet. What's it like to live in Morocco? But please, don't read no shit written by white girls saying they got raped in the streets. Because guess what? White women who travel here have the exact same problem that they have in the United States. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, me, oh, my. I was like, if you was walking around with Daisy Duke shorts, cut up your ass, and people called you a hoe, well, that's because that's mad disrespectful here. That's mad disrespectful throughout the entire continent of Africa, right? I want to talk about racism. If you act like an asshole, people going to treat you like an asshole. It's actually just that simple. If you act like Trump, you get treated like Trump. Plain and simple. Are you here taking a job from a Moroccan? Then people not gonna like you. If you're here spending money and helping the economy, people like you and invite you to their house to eat. Because that's where the best food is. Now, we are live. Somebody got some questions. I see comments. I see say that. Oh, thanks for the education. I never knew that. I don't eat there, man. Okay, so I don't know how you eat vegetarian in Nigeria, girl. <laughs> okay, I mean, I just think you will miss out on so much food. You know, my bestie asked me the same thing. Can I send the Amazon link for the traveling sleeping bag? Brett Felder, go on Amazon, Google traveling sleeping bag. <laughs> and then when they come up, it'll say pick by categories and put highest rated and just get that one. It ain't got to be that deep, poo poo. And the sleeping bag is like, it's, it's a, oh, thank you. I look standing. Thank you. It's because I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> This is my apartment, and I don't know if everybody can see. This is my deck. It wraps all the way around my apartment. It's totally fucking ridiculous. Okay, that's my fucking deck. Okay, so this is my living room. It's really a hot mess right now, but there's my living room. It has tons of light. And here's my deck. It starts around the living room, and then it goes past the bedroom, <laughs> and then it goes all the way around to the other side of the bedroom. Here's my view. All the buildings are painted salmon in Marrakesh, and it's a law. I learned that today to keep the uniformity and the beauty so that the buildings look like they came up out of the sand. So it looks like a desert city with palm trees. It's really pretty. Um, and my apartment's like so gorgeous. Um, and my kitty cat loves me so much. She got toys today from the vet. Aisha? Aisha? Aisha, you want to say hello? Aisha, say hello. I got my medicine from the vet. And I'm going to start it soon. And I've been tearing shit up. And I love my mama. I'm a Moroccan cat. Okay, that was the introduction to Aisha. I have to close the door because AC is on. Do I have any other questions? Come with an open mind. Come I'm not trying to be American. Come. And I'll show you the magic. Plus, you could be like, I'm sorry, I'm vegetarian. And Jesus just handed you a plate of food. Okay. The people here are beautiful. I'm just going to tell you. And if you smile at them, they'll smile back at you. And then they'll hug you. It's fucking crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> it's hot as fuck right now. Um, so that's why my hair is up and it's staying up most of the time. Um, what I did when I moved, which was a little different than when I came before, is that I didn't want to pay a whole bunch of money for um, suitcases. Because, you know, once you get past that first suitcase, 
uh, you're talking about money in the United States <laughs> and not like a little fucking bit. I was like, oh, when the suitcases we got $35 for suitcase. I mean, God damn. In Morocco, I brought three extra suitcases. You ready for it? Wait for it. I paid $150 for huge suitcases. That same suitcase, the same one suitcase in the US, I paid $100 for just one. Okay, let's just do Morocco's a cash and carry culture. This was a hard one for me. I was like, cash and carry? You can only take out $400 a day in the United States. Honey, everything is cash. So you're going to go back to the envelope culture, <laughs> which is, here's my budget for my trip. Okay. On our trip, your breakfast is always covered. There will be several dinners. If you look at the itinerary, which I'll type the link at the end of this. If you look at the itinerary, it tells you what days we have special meals, right? So when we're staying in somebody's house in the mountains, and that's not, let me explain house. Houses are riads. Remember I said that everything looks like a little castle? It's because they built their houses as small fortifications. So a riad is, and there's pictures of riads on the page. It's like a little mini castle with a courtyard in the inside with a fountain and trees and da 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 da. They used to keep cattle and shit and had a garden and shit in there because they might be under siege. And each family lives on a different floor. So when you stay in people's riads that are their houses, they the family will be up top, right? And one member of the family will be acting as a concierge for that day. And you will have a floor, like our team will have the west side of the house, right? And, and like there was a European biking tour of German men. It was like 16 of them that were like biking through the mountains. They have the other side of the house. And sometimes we cross paths, but for the most part not because the places are so big. And then the family that lives up top, they'll come and visit and welcome you when they first get there. And then they go back upstairs and cook their couscous and, you know, in the mountains, watch satellite TV. Okay. <laughs> and then the nephew or son will be your concierge. He will be the person that organizes your meals and your excursion for that day. But she will always be with us. I will be with you in most places unless I have to get down south to get ready for the retreat. Um, I won't be meeting you guys in Casablanca because, uh, it, you know, I, there's nothing I want to see in Casablanca. But you need to see it because you ain't never been there. <laughs> I saw it before. And I want to get to Chef Shallon, which is the next city. And it's called the Blue City. And it's a city in the mountains. Just, it's spelled C-H-E-F. Oh, my God, help me, Rashid. Chef Shallon, C-H-A-O-U-E-N. There are pictures of it, again, on the itinerary. There are pictures in this group if you go to... The photos in the Dreaming um, Morocco group, there's tons of pictures of Morocco. Um, but uh, Chef Shallon is known as a blue city because it's entirely blue. All the walls, you've seen all those pictures where you see of alleys that are blue with big, vibrant red roses. When you see pictures of that from, from Morocco, that's Chef Shallon. And I didn't get to visit there when I was on my tour, so I made it part of this tour because it's magic. Um, they also have waterfalls outside the city. So I'm very excited. So I'm going to go to Chef Shallon early. You guys will meet in Casablanca, mostly because that's where the cheapest flights are. It's the quickest place. It's the capital. It's the quickest place to get to, to get into Morocco from anywhere by flights. And the prices are always going to be better. Like you can get tickets for well under $800, $900. I mean, off season seven, um, into Casablanca. Other places cost more money. Um, and then Casablanca is perfectly situated for us to begin our tour just because we're going from Casablanca to the other side of the country slowly. So you guys will be flying into Casablanca. You'll stay there one night. Um, if, if I were you, I would come in the night before um, it, just to get orientated and to relax and deal with jet lag. Um, if you have a connection, be prepared for your luggage. Am I get lost? <laughs> if you can fly direct, that would be smart. Better yet, if you can fly on Royal Air Morocco, and this is what I learned the second time around. Um, before I was coming from Europe, I was coming from Switzerland. So there weren't as many options because of where I was. But um, if you fly on the Moroccan airlines, what they do is when you're flying to a city, they just forward your luggage to whatever city you're going to. So even if you're going to Casablanca, right? Or if I was going to Marrakesh. Everything starts in Casablanca, right? And then connects to another part of the country, right? I got on the plane going to Casablanca in New York. What they did, did was then put all of my luggage on a plane going straight to Marrakesh, which is smart 
because no, my luggage got there before I did. There was no chance it was going to get lost. And Morocco is cheap. When you get on the plane, this was pretty fucking amazing. So Morocco is very famous for amber and resin and all that shit. People walk around in Brooklyn that fake shit, black soap, fake black soap, fake amber, fake <laughs> all those herbs and incense and shit, all that fake shit that we got. Okay. It's from here. So it's not fake here. Okay. You get a piece of amber. It's like a square, like a piece of soap. And you burn it in your incense and you warm it up and rub it on your body as perfume. And it doesn't have that cloying, sweet smell. Well, as you go through and give them your ticket at boarding and you go through the little walkway to go to the plane, they, they welcome you to Morocco by burning amber. So you smell the amber. It's kind of fucking magical. And then you get on and you get Moroccan food on the plane. Okay, bitch, what? I was like, what the fuck did not fly on Royal Morocco first? Nobody looked at my skin color. Nobody, nobody gave a fuck. They were like, what you do? How you doing? You pretty? How you doing? What was your name? What? They were like, uh, part of my No. Arabic? No. Uh, Spanish? Yeah, I got that. I was like, sign me up. They'll find a language to communicate with you. Because they're like, welcome. Welcome. And the minute you put on a piece of Moroccan clothing, you're getting wedding proposals. You're getting smiles in the street. People going to drive by in the car. And instead of saying, bitch, I want your pussy, people are going to be like, ah, saha. Because, like, you honored them by wearing their clothing. So, a dinner lady, pack an overnight bag. I carried a duffel bag and one rolling bag. And I carried a backpack because I took my laptop because I loaned a lot while I was there. Um, the backpack is what you'll carry, like your day pack, a small backpack. I would carry a small day pack, something sturdy and reliable. Don't get a little cheapy. Because when we travel, so say we land in Fez, for example, we're going to be there for two or three days. When you go out during the day, you don't want to carry your suitcase. But I'm going to tell you, your best bottom dollar, your ass is going to shop. You can, like, not shop. Okay? The history of Morocco, what you learn when you read the day, I'm going to look at it, is that Moroccans were the people or Berbers or the Tuareg were the men in the desert that went fuck to China. Not that Marco Polo shit. The original merchants of Africa were the Berbers, which is the main tribe, right, of Morocco. They went from China all the way across the Saharan desert carrying spices, cinnamon, all the shit that we know and take for granted now. Tea, incense, silver, um, sassafron, sass saffron, all kinds of herbs, all kinds of fabrics and silk. Moroccans were the people who brought that across the desert. They know how to do that shit. They know how to preserve shit, they know how to make shit, they know how to bring it across the desert. And that's why Morocco is called the gateway to Europe, right? Right? Or the gateway to Africa from Europe. So it's a culture that's built on craftsmen making things and selling it to you. It's just like the souk or the marketplace. It's unlike any other marketplace you've ever been in. I don't care if you've been in other parts of Africa. Right? This is like an artist's orgasm. <laughs> other parts of Africa, they sell you shit from wherever. Shit here is handmade. Unless you go gangster, you buy something to do at the, gangst at the gas station, and that's Muhammad, a.k.a. You know, Malquan, selling you some shit from China for $2. Don't do that. In the marketplace, you get shit that somebody was making. So my luggage got lost when I came here the first time. This came through Spain. And the concierge at the hotel, when I walked in, I introduced myself to him. I said, hello. And he said, Saha. I was like, what's your name? He's like, Mustafa. Went up to dinner, came back down. Mustafa was like, what is happening? And I was like, huh? Because <laughs> I had on the same clothes because I had no luggage. And he was like, what is happening? I was like, I don't have luggage. I don't have clothes. And he's like, what? Where is your luggage? Give me the number. He took my phone. <laughs> the airline and was like, you're going to have her fucking luggage there in the next three hours. And I'm putting her in a car to come get it. <laughs> then he dragged me across the street and he bought me clothes. And I was like, oh, well, I can't get this right now. I, I, I don't want this. And I was like, and it's like, they're making it. No. I said, wait, no, I can't go in there. Buy the shit off the rack. He's like, no, this is, this is Morocco. We make. The woman, he took me in the back of the store. There was like a bunch of grandmas back there sewing on machines, watching TV, drinking tea. That's what the cigarettes. I was like, what? <laughs> they were fucking making it. I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and they were like, now we go, we have coffee, we get to toothpaste, and when we come back, you have, you have suits. 
Pence, matching, matching jalaba. I was like, oh, oh, okay. They make everything. This is why I'm telling you, do not pack no bullshit. The white kids come here with a backpack and an empty duffel bag stuck in their back. Why? Because they come in the shop. You are going to have a wet dream every time you leave the hotel. You are going to want to buy shit. The Palazzo pants, the Harold pants, the embroidered tops. The de- Don't even get me started on the jewelry. You are going to want to shop. I am telling you, do not bring a bunch of bullshit clothes. Because all you're going to do is buy a hand and put it on walk around in it. <laughs> like, there's clothes and fabric everywhere. It is what they do. They are the merchants of Africa. And it's not bullshit that was made in a factory. It's handmade. So there's so much stuff that's beautiful. You just can have, I mean, I was having orgasm everywhere, you know, and if you got this goddess shit going on, you're gonna be like, oh my God, those pants. Does somebody just sew that like gold thread on the edge of them? And you're like, yes. And it's sheer and it's linen, yes. And it's like, how much? It's $12. What? Bitch, give me that. Okay, so you will regret it. Like I did, I had to buy a suitcase. And I regret it, toting all that motherfucking luggage full of American like sweatpants and yoga pants and denim shorts that I never fucking wore. Because I shopped, I shopped, I shopped. I bought pottery, I bought plates, I bought, you know, 17 days, $1,500. Mama went to town, okay? Mama went to town shopping. So, you carry all that luggage if you want to. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna be carrying it. So I just want you to think about the idea of, okay, I gotta get out the van and roll this luggage across a sandy oasis that looks like the beach, the size of a parking lot, to my hotel. I got to roll that. All right? Okay, great. Or when we go to Toja Gorge, which is a hotel up the side of a motherfucking mountain, and you drive into the mountain, and then you get off. And you're on an incline and they send some people to help you with your bags but them dudes is paid to carry two bags now if you got some heavy ass shit, guess who's gonna be walking up the side of a mountain to get to your hotel room put all the motherfucking bags only to learn that the next day you going to town where they sell all the robes and shit that you're gonna want to put on because everybody at hotels are already wearing them you're the only fool in american clothing like the japanese tourists got on caftans and shit. the men have long robes and shit. It costs four dollars. Ham it. So do not be like me with the fucking four suitcases. And my lovely guy Rashid had memorized my suitcases by the third day. He knew all the suitcases that were mine. And he was like, Black girl, please leave them in the back. <laughs> we're not carrying them. Now I will tell you about race because I was called chocolate when I first got there. And everywhere I went, I went, I'm black, I'm black, black, I'm black, I'm black. And everybody laughed at me. Because in Casablanca, my first day, when Mustafa dragged my little brown ass across the street to get me some clothes made, a man came out of his little coffee shop and said, Hi, Nutella, come drink. And you know, my little round ass, when somebody says drink or eat, I'm there. But I was like, Mustafa, he called me Nutella. I'm just referencing my crazy so I went up and he was, I was like, I'm black. <laughs> I was double like, okay, no, 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 you're Nutella. This is my friend. This is this. He is black. I am chocolate. You are Nutella. Okay? I was like, oh, because people got all different colors in their families. And Nutella, I was like, oh, I just got called food. This is very good. Okay. So, Rashid and a lot of my friends joke and call me black girl because I'm ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm black, I'm black. And then we like at somebody's house in the suite. This man that I bought roads from, his company owns, his family owns a restaurant. They was black. <laughs> And they were like, chocolate, it's good, it's good, your chocolate. Uh, right? Or they identify people by like, no, don't buy the rugs from the man with the green eyes. Buy the rugs from the chocolate man with the green eyes. Okay, because you're going to get a good deal. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, race, my brain. I was just like, oh, did I just get a marriage proposal? I just I was like, the sheep are people asking me, nobody wants black women in America. And he was like, black girl, nobody cares. Here, nobody cares. Are you a good person? That's actually what I heard before. Do you have a big ass? Because in America, you know it's do you have a big ass? Here is, is she a good person? You are a good person. Her face lights up when you walk in the room. You are kindness. You are a good person. 
if you're a good person, that's actually all that fucking matters. Right? When we were in Mendelet, tiny little, tiny little Berber town. People don't have indoor toilets. We're going to try through there. People don't have electricity. They're just building their houses a little bit each year. Like, they have nothing. I walked through and I was like, Saha, that's hello. And I'm a Zeke, which is the language of the Berber. And little girls with their jobs came out and they were like, hello, hello, speaking the, the three words in English and having me go to tea. And when I got to the van, because I was always late to the van, because I made friends with everybody, because I like brown people who like me. Um, and they kept putting food in my mouth. And so, you know, I'm going to stay. And gelato, like everywhere. So when we got to the van, these little boys are running back on their bikes. And they have been throwing rocks at <laughs> the other people on my tour. And I was like, oh, are they throwing rocks at them because they're white people? No, they were throwing rocks at them because they weren't good people. Because they took pictures of people without asking. A man went out the back of his house to take a shit. In the back of his house, in the hole in the ground, his outhouse. house. And the fucking woman in my tour is taking a motherfucking picture. Seriously? I was like, it's right. Oh, she's like, oh, they don't, they don't know. They're just filthy. I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, okay. So when I got back to the van and the little boys were throwing rocks at the white ladies, and she was like, what? This was like, they're light like me. I was like, they're African. And you just broke their rules by taking pictures of them when they told you not to. And then you took pictures of the man shitting in his backyard. Who the fuck are you? That's why you got rocks thrown at you. So when I got on the bus and I was like, oh, they threw the rocks at you. They're like, they did the rocks at you. I was like, no, they were kissing and hugging me and asked me to take a picture with them. So in Morocco, you get back what you give. Let that be a lesson. What you give is exactly what you get. Also, people come out and people begin with, I trust you. It's not America. I trust you until you give me a reason not to. So you actually have no reason to be an asshole here because people are just playing on ice. If your titties is hanging out, some grandmama is going to come and adjust your top. But besides that, <laughs> so she's like, cover up your titties. Okay, he got to work for it. And men are accustomed to working for it in this country. Trust. They work for it. For the date. What can I do for you? Are you happy? <laughs> well, I like ice cream. I bring you ice cream. I was like, man, just bought me ice cream on the street. I was like, I, I was just in the cafe yesterday saying I like ice cream. So they made sure I had ice cream. He didn't try and stick his dick at me. He was just like, it used to be nice. Because it is ingrained in them that you got to work for a woman. This is not something you just get. You have to work. You meet somebody for a date, they don't even come by themselves. It's inappropriate. It's not respectful. This is a magnificent country. Eat a piece of chicken, be happy. Are there any more questions? Okay. So, so when somebody else says some bullshit about I'm vegetarian, yes, you know, it's my friend Jessica like My best friend is vegetarian. I hate that shit. I was like, you want to be vegetarian? You come to my house? Bring your own broccoli. Because my broccoli, I'm marinated with garlic, and then I might put some fat back grease up in there. Just depends on how I'm feeling today. Or make it in the same pan I just made pork chops. Because pork chops are from Jesus. I don't fuck with ham. I don't fuck with pork. But pork chops are from Jesus. And so I will marinate some shit in the same pan I made pork chops. My eggs always get scrambled in the pork chop pan. Because Jesus gave us that for a reason. God gave us a refrigerator so that we'd have to be reading the Bible talking about you can't eat pork. God gave us fucking refrigerators for a reason. So we can eat pork chops. Work with me here. Are there any more questions? I could go on and on and on. Do y'all want me to go through the? Can you send the Amazon? Okay, Emma, let's say to 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 say that Kia Michelle. I love Kia Michelle because she basically in the choir going. Say that bitch. Say that bitch. Say that what you say. Yes, you sad. You're not going. Say you better get some pennies and try and go. <laughs> People are so nice. Um. Uh, the food on the flight is the fucking bomb. If I had one more fucking baguette, I was going to punch somebody. And Moroccans eat for breakfast what's called a Moroccan pancake. It's like a crepe, but it's heavier and buttery. Sweet baby Jesus. And they will make it all day long in the cities. In the country, you can only get it in the morning. So you best get it when you could get it. Because when it's gone, it's gone. And it's a little woman on the side of a road with a some a, a oven a clay oven with a, li a live flame in it and she's making them fresh do not even get me started okay 
Okay. All right. Here in Marrakesh, I was having dinner with some Cameroonians, and bro man was like, yo, I love Senegalese food, but I'm about to be up in here with this pancake at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Hi, Zoe. You should go back and listen to the recording. I don't have time for the vegetarians. You want to be a vegetarian? Stay U.S. in New York. Not Morocco. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Or, or, or pack your own food. Like, I did. I brought all my diet food here. And actually, my Wonderslam med fast food is all vegetarian. I just bought bags and bags of it, ordered it, I add hot water, and I go. Um, this is not a vegetarian country. It's also not a rich country. So if you want to be a vegetarian here, work that out. Go listen to the beginning of this video. I have zero tolerance for that. This is not the tour for you. You should travel so many people on GA travels are intrepid when they complain and act like rich, privileged Americans all day long. And you can eat vegetarian food to your heart's content. This is a tour organized by an African-American woman and a North African man named Rashid. We're Africans. We're black. Very proud of the culture here. You need to be a vegetarian. That's not this culture. So work it out. Uh, any more questions? No. Yeah, vegetarians need love? That's why you live in America. Get all the love you need. This is a country where people live off of $70 a month. If they make you a piece of chicken, eat the fucking chicken. Shut up. Okay. Any other questions? Zero, zero, zero. You still want us to bring you your food? I might be, um, thank you, Antoinette. I might, I love my diet pancakes because I eat bread here. Like, Moroccans don't eat that much bread, but because the bread here is all fresh baked, I just eat it all day long, and I'm getting big as a motherfucking house. So there are a couple of things that are really expensive here, internet, that I'll get your address, and I will order them on Amazon. Like, my cat, I have a kitty cat. My cat's flea medication here, you can buy it in the United States without a prescription. Here you need a prescription, and it's kind of expensive. So there's certain things that are more expensive here that I'll, I'll want you to bring back. So I'll let you know. It's just like visiting my relatives in the Caribbean. They were like, get me some Levi jeans. I'm like, why? Because some things cost so much money here. But if you get Levi jeans at Sears in Miami, they cost $30. I'll get on the boat, go to the Bahamas, get a jeans to my auntie. Works out. And then she makes me 15 bags of conch and freezes some of it, and then I can come. Which in Miami is, I don't know, $32 a pound? It's like ridiculous. All right. So, yeah, I will let you know about what I need. Probably some couple of my diet things I want because I'll probably be big as a house by it by then <laughs> if you're not following me on Instagram I am doing a day by day follow my journey in Morocco I'm trying to share stuff here in this group um, so you can come and check this group too um, the Instagram has like tons of pictures and I'm doing a post for I'm trying to do my first 90 days in Morocco so um, yeah check it out um, if you go through the post on this page, I've been sharing a lot of my Instagram posts about aha moments, and I get lots of questions about why Morocco, why Morocco. I've talked about some of that in this uh, video recording, but in those posts, I talk about it in detail, and I'm going section by section by section. Um, and the short answer is that my values changed dramatically. Um, and I guess you get a certain age, you know, and you're like, what you value is important. And I was talking to a Frenchman today on the phone. Funny, I moved to motherfucking Morocco. Guess who wants to date me? Somebody in motherfucking France. I was like, but I'm in Morocco. I said, I can't help you. I'm in Morocco. They were like, well, I'm not going to Morocco. I said, you do what you need to do, but I'm in Morocco. So it was very interesting when people asked me, like, did you move to Morocco for love? I was like, I moved to Morocco for love with me. <laughs> so now I'm talking to a dude in France, and I live in Morocco. <laughs> you got to love it. OK, I was talking to a dude in Australia. And I'm in Morocco. What your sisters that make? What your sisters that make? Anyway, these are my issues. So, and we were talking about um, America, and he was talking about how every time he goes to Cuba, the, the plane is full of Western women, Canadians, and Americans going to Cuba looking for men, right? And he's like, uh, he's like, you're the only more, you're the only African American woman I know coming to Morocco and not looking for men, because <laughs> I truly was not. And I was like. I'm more tempted to get a ticket to a concert. I'm not trying to be like, whatever. And I was like, why is that? He was like, because men don't know how to act. Since feminism, they're emasculated. And women think feminism means not being soft. And they got a whole bunch of shit. So people don't know their roles and how to communicate. And I was like, you know what? You might be right. Because here, men know how to act. 
This is my next post. There are no baby daddies here. There might be some, sure, undercover. There's some that got some girls pregnant and they at the nonprofit organization in Casablanca. That's an aberration. If you get a girl pregnant and you don't marry her, her daddy, your daddy, your uncles, your cousins will drag your ass out in the street and whip your ass in public. And the next day you will be married and have paid her dowry. You know what I love about that? This is a culture that ensures men become men. Because manhood is defined as you become, by becoming a better man, you become a better human being. And your role as a man is to take care of your family. That's what makes you a man. Not slinging your dick and making babies. Not getting a lot of money and flashing it around and being a rapper. Do you take care of your family? And every man knows that. Right? You don't get married until you present yourself as with the ability to house her and feed her in the in the the way that she is accustomed, right? So you men don't be in your face fucking with you. Jojo might be on the corner doing don't be laughing at my poke chop internet. Jojo might be on the corner trying to holler at you. More than likely he is actually trying to sell you a carpet. Don't get it twisted when people are flirting. They usually just like have some great carpets in here because i told you these people is merchants and the shit they got up in them little carts and shit and baskets it ain't like that bullshit at the africa festival it dance africa at brooklyn that shit that's made in china like when i first came back from africa and i went to that brooklyn festival i was like what is this bullshit it looked like toys r us because it's all fake none of it's real when somebody pull you up in one of them alleys with they little cart and shit and rocker the shit is real unless we tell you don't go in there that's some bullshit okay and that's probably because he don't have a cart and he in front of the gas station and you know that guy's everywhere. So it was interesting. Men don't fuck with you here. Because these women be wearing veils and shit, like fashion. And they're like, la. La means no. OK? So don't be rolling over here trying to talk to me. You ain't presented yourself to my daddy's house and showed us your, your 401k and your financial papers and whether or not you own your house. You don't get to talk to me. You don't get to talk to me until you got all that going. If I hear one more time, if a man coming over and being like, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought, did I get jump in front of you? And like, I'm really sorry. I'm sending you some coffee. No, it's okay. It's fine. No, no, it is respect. I must be respectful. I was like, they got mamas walking around with drivers and coal on their eyes and maids and housekeepers and shit and go to the spa every week or her mom every night who are like, bitch, your job is to be respectful to a woman. Now, in every culture, you got your extremists, got the woman locked up in the house. But we got them all over Harlem. If I see one more black American woman wrapped up in a motherfucking burka, I'll say, bitch, you got, the, you got the option to be free. What the fuck is you wrapped up in this, all this heat? She chose that. Guess what? A lot of the women here in Morocco chose that, too. And there's a whole bunch of other bitches that walk around and hit jobs and weaves and make up for 15 days with YouTube channels. So one thing the men know is you must come correct. And baby making... I have to tell you one of the biggest reasons that I was like, I am done with America is everybody walking around like it's okay making babies with people you're not married to. That is really like at my core, that shit does not sit well with me. It makes something in the bottom of my stomach simmer. And when I see a man asking a woman for money or making babies that he can't care, it makes me vomit. And it's actually very hard for me to hold a conversation with men who are not men. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it, that doesn't pass for okay. All the bullshit with women emailing me and they on dating sites. Dating sites don't really work here. Because you got to go over and present yourself and talk to a woman and just demonstrate. And I was talking to my friend, my host, Susie Bartman, I'm staying in. Um, he was like, um, everybody else in the world, a man got to learn how to talk to a bitch. He's like, I don't even know what to do with a woman walking over to me asking me if she could buy me a drink. I was supposed to go over there and convince her ass to, to let me buy her dinner. That's my job. If she does the work, then I'm not a man. I was like, that's all I need to know about Morocco. Sign me the fuck up. And the men act accordingly. They don't buy you a drink at a bar or at a cafe. They walk, they buy the drink, they ask the waiter, what you drink, they buy the drink, and then they walk up to the table and put it in front of you and ask, is it okay if I bought you this drink? They don't even ask to sit down. That's not respectful. <laughs> they don't have a conversation with you. Or wait until tomorrow when you come back in the cafe, because everybody goes to their cafe, right? 
And this is the first time I've had a neighborhood cafe that I can actually go to because in the United States, everybody's trying to rape me with their eyes. If I go sit in a bar by myself for a cafe, not so much here. Unless it's disco night, Friday night, and the DJ is playing, and then you don't want to sit there. But to sit down in a restaurant for three hours and work on your laptop, nobody's going to fuck with you. I was like, oh my God, I've been here for three hours. Nobody came over and tried to have sex with my body. Nobody's sucking my breast. <laughs> it's like, men do not pull that shit here. They just don't. What is this shit you're talking about? You go on Dutch. Dutch? Fuck a Dutch. When a man picks a restaurant, he is showing you how he can take care of you. Let him show you. If you don't give him place to be a man, then he has nowhere to go. And guess what? Men, and this culture proves to me what I have always thought. Men learn how to be men from women. So take that feminist bullshit, which is for your job. That's not for interpersonal relationships. There is biology at work, okay? Men are one dimensional creatures who do one thing at a time, right? That is what they are programmed to do. That is where their manhood comes from. I must take care of her, that is my duty. I must hunt and prove myself worthy. That is how I get my manhood. So when you don't let a man do that and then he acts like a little boy and you're like, why are you acting like a little boy and asking me for money? My work here is done. Here, I never even had to have that conversation. Never. Ain't nobody coming over here to talk to me unless that shit is correct. Married men are not hitting on you. That's not appropriate. They might be doing it behind closed doors, but that is not accepted in this society. I was telling this to someone who was trying to convince me all up and down. Well, the women are oppressed there. And I was like, you know, and they don't have any rights. And they're second class citizens. And somebody on Facebook tried to do that in my post. I was like, have you been here? That's a book you read. And you sound like a privileged white person. That's a book you read. Okay? Everybody chooses. Everybody chooses. And this is the most tolerant country in the world. It's Muslim light. <laughs> and proselytizing and, and Catholicism and all the, you know, the priests coming through and sharing religion. The reason they have freedom of religion here is because they figured out what the rest of fucking Africa is not figured out. That the minute you let religion in, you let the colonizer in. So Morocco is all about freedom of religion. The Jews ran here, the Moors ran here, the Inquisition was killing everybody all over the place, everybody ran to Morocco, which gave them a haven. Freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of lifestyle is deeply respected here. That's why people walk around with burkas covered all the way up to their ass, and then a bunch of people around the corner is rappers. <laughs> it's Moroccan girl rappers. I'm like, all in the same afternoon, okay. So your freedom, your choice is respected. Women, if you're not respected, a lot of that is choice. Just like going on dates in America and paying Dutch, that's your choice. You've chosen that. I ain't paid for a date since Jesus was a baby because I shouldn't have to. Now, if you ask me out, now if I invite you to my house and I cook a meal, that's on me. But if you're asking for my time to get to know me, you should plan that, not me. And here's a real practical reason why you shouldn't agree to plan dates for men. I did this once, trying to be liberated. Fuck a liberated. I picked a place that was too expensive for this guy. So it was humiliating to him at the end of the meal that to have to ask me to help pay for it. It was humiliating. I had no idea that I was serious, but I didn't, I didn't know he was a grad student. You know, he was a doctor, he was a resident, and he had no money. It was humiliating. Had I let him pick to go to Trader Joe's and buy some food and create a picnic lunch, or take me for fancy pizza and or take me to Chinatown. It would have been a nice date. The food would have been great. And it would have been within his ballpark. Instead, he was a really nice guy who ended up being humiliated and I never heard from him again. I should have let him pick the restaurant and let him pay. In Morocco, when a guy asks you out, he's usually not gonna ask you to go out by yourself because that's fucked up. He's not trying to fuck you, he's trying to get to know you. He may bring a friend or tell you to bring a friend. So you, you go as a group and he's paying. Let him pay. Let him pay. It's how they know what to do. It's why the men here don't act like assholes. Because they're conditioned that they have to earn it. I love this fucking country. I love it. Is it perfect? No. Is there still women being discriminated against? Yeah. Uh, are they still lynching black people in the streets? In the United States? Yes. Are they lynching black people in the streets here? 
was like, I was at a restaurant where people were sitting there talking about how disgusted they were with three strikes, you're out. How do they know about our laws and you don't know shit about Morocco? They're like, what the fuck kind of country arrests a kid and then he gets arrested for stealing some bubble gum. Then he gets arrested for stealing a bike. Then he gets arrested for having a marijuana joint in his pocket. And then he goes to jail for the rest of his life. What the fuck kind of country is that? I was like, yeah, it's really fucked up. And he was like, because he's black. What is that? He's like, that's outrageous. <laughs> he was like, everything is about money. So somebody can get the contract with the prison to provide food, and then they can lease out those prisoners to do some work for another company. Oh, it's all so clever. This was a Moroccan. It's the Moroccans at a table sitting next to me. They knew this about our country. I fucking love this country. Okay, it's about to get dark, cause it's nice. I got to go sit in my cafe, have my couscous, okay. have my olives. I love y'all, I mean it. I'm gonna chat one more time. I've only been there a week. I only been here a week, but you know what? In my soul, I'm I'm a nomad. I believe in freedom. And that's what these people believe in. Kindness, beauty, and freedom. It's my kind of place. Peace, love, and hair grease. I got to go see my Moroccan men's at my cafe across the street. They got my water ready. Bye boy. Love you, being it. Rashid, thank you for taking me shopping today. I love you so much. And my kitty loves her new scratching pose. Goodbye. I love you. Bye, y'all.